Was Freeways the album that really broke up Bachman Turner Overdrive? We talked to Randy Backman about that. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music. We had a live thing on, on, uh, on YouTube. We do it every Friday night. I asked folks a few weeks ago, uh, I was saying, what's the, what's the perfect BTO album? And you know what came up the most, Not Fragile. Not oh. Fragile, Not Fragile. I've told you when I met you the last time that Freeways, that album really hit me. It really, really, I was ready for it. I was at that point with the band personally that I went, when you guys came, I thought, like, wow, there's like so much going on on this album. And I know that people call it the album that broke up BTO. Um, but for me personally, I was ready for that album because I was into a lot of genres and a lot of things. Um, so, yeah, and so was radio. Radio was then playing disco. Yeah. They're playing long tracks by like, yes, like roundabout and stuff like that. They're really progressive rock. And I thought I've got to get out of this thing. I mean, we, we should have broken up then. We should have dissolved. ZZ Top broke up. They toured the world. Doobie Brothers broke up. I and mean, they just disbanded. Almond Brothers disbanded like for four and five. Then they came back. I tried to keep going under the pressure and going back to these eyes days, got Ben McPeak to write the string arrangement for Easy Groove. Got some guy from Dr. Music in Toronto to write the horn charts for my, my Wheels Won't Turn. I had a lot of fun doing that. And music then, they were taking, they took a listen to the music by the Doobie Brothers and put a, a kick drum disco beat in it. And Elvis with a suspicious mind, they did a, a, a disco version of Elvis. So I thought, I'm going to try to go with the trend here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a chance. I took a chance. What did the band think? By then, they were to the point, where, which happens with most bands. A band, and because I financed the band, I produced the band. I gave them a salary so they wouldn't have to have a job. Up to like 100 grand. This is in 1971 and two. I said, this is my band. These are my rules. I'm your older brother. I will be a benevolent father or dictator, but you must keep my rules because I'm risking. I have two kids at the time and my house in mortgage. I'm paying you guys a salary, 175 bucks a week to do nothing. Sit around, get musical ideas and don't work at a day job. Were you and living we, in the big house then? No, no. This is back in Winnipeg before I left. And um, as you get popular and famous, and I said, look, I'm the songwriter. I'm writing songs for us. I'm going to write with you. I'm going to write with you for because I'm not, I'm smart enough to know I can't write 12 great songs that are all different. They're all going to be the same. So I bring a Fred Turner and I bring a Blair Thornton and my brother Tim and Robin. The song is a little bit of them and I tailor it a little bit and we'll have different kind of song. Suddenly it gets to album three and four and it's like, okay, there's eight songs on an album. We want two. Okay, what are you bringing? What are you bringing? Oh, there's 12 songs. What are you bringing for your one third? What are you bringing for your three songs? Well, I've got one written. I'm going to write two more. Oh, Fred, what are you bringing for your three songs? Well, I've got one and a half written. I'm going to write one and a half more. Okay, I'm bringing 22 songs. Out of my songs, we can pick 10. You had 22 songs for Freeways? For every album. I oh. write songs. Every day I write songs. I just pick and choose the one that fit the project. If you called me and said, my daughter's 14, she's like Jewel, I said, great, I can write a song like Jewel, I'll, I'll produce your daughter, I'll do the album, I, I can write that, I've written everything. So everybody wants equal schmequal. So out comes one good song from one guy and two mediocre songs. When I write 10 or 12 or 15 songs, out of there, like three or four really good songs. So the album's got watered down. This happened with Credence. John, I want to write a song. Okay, write a song. It's terrible. Yeah, but I want it on the album. So out comes whatever it was, Cosmos Factory, with a bunch of songs that go nowhere. And John Fogarty had the magic. How tough is it to stay on the John bus and ride another couple of miles and put another couple of million in your pocket, then do your own solo project, a vanity project that totally flops, but don't spoil the band. So that's what kind of happened. It started to happen on a fifth album, uh, head on. And then it really happened on Freeways. What mean? happened in that? What happened in that period? Is somebody invented a thing called an eventide harmonizer. Do you know what that is? When it's at zero, it's at pitch. When you turn it to zero, it's digital. When you put it to zero plus one, it'll sharpen that note, one hundredth of a percent. 
It'll sharpen it to one hundredths because it's all digital. So I remember playing back head on for the band, which had little Richard on it, playing a, a couple of songs. And I had heard them having a fight later saying, I thought you were going to sing flat and sharp on that song. So they told Fred to sing off key so the album wouldn't be done. They wanted their songs on the album. But I ran it through the harmonizer and I, on one syllable, I'd sharpen Fred's vocal or I'd flatten it on a vocal if he sang sharp. So I had everything in pitch and I had to do this thing by hand. I made notes. This lyric goes up plus two, this goes down plus one. So everything was there. So Head On came out. It was a pretty good album. That's some really good stuff. And then Total Sabotage with Freeways. Yeah. I think I wrote most of the songs. They all refused their songs unless I picked a whole bunch of their songs. And they, they were not really songwriters. They wrote songs, but they weren't songwriters. I've been writing songs since I was 10, 11, and 12. I had songs on the Guess Who album with Ashford and Simpson way back then. My songs were good enough to be on their thing. And and Bert Bacharach loved my songs. I did, Ashford, I did Phil Ramone and Florence Greenberg. Now, keep in mind the entire interview, and the link is in the bottom in the description of this video. If you want to see the whole thing, it's on our sister channel, Rock History Book. It's also going to be a podcast, and the links are in the description as well. Make sure you comment on our videos. You know we read all the comments. Subscribe to our channel. It's so important to us. And of course, spread the word. Let people know. And share our videos. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Take good care of yourself.